now that we've got to a point where while we are designing our power supply, um, we're going to have to think about some of the real practicalities. And one of them is actually programmable reference stability. Uh, the programmable reference TL431, uh, LMB431, all of these, given that you've got an op-amp and a feedback, uh, can, like anything else, go unstable. Uh, the good news is that there are plots in the data sheet of all of these devices that actually show you the stable region and the unstable region. For example, this plot is taken from the data sheet of TL431, available from TI, and it shows the stable region here and here, and the unstable region is, in fact, in the middle. So um, how bad is the problem? Well, they define it as a stability with a purely capacitive load. So we don't have a purely capacitive load. We have got resistors on it, and therefore it is not as bad as this plot. This is if you had a purely capacitive load between the anode and cathode of the uh, programmable reference. However, if you look at the regions, you see that there are many uh, ranges of capacitances that you cannot actually use and there is no way of knowing what is the total amount of capacitive load is. And that's why it is also important to measure the compensator on its own with a, a, a network analyzer and, and to see whether it's stable or not. So let's have a look. Assume for now that we've got a current of 15 milliamps so that it fits uh, with, the, uh, with the plot. Uh, also assume that under worst case conditions, the uh, cathode anode voltage across the programmable reference falls to its minimum, so VKA is equal to VREF, and that gives us curve A to look at. Okay, now then, curve A, let's see what the limits are. Our stability region, therefore, will be from here to here. This is the capacitance of the load in microfarads, and that is effectively from 1 to 10 nanofarads. And then from 10 nanofarads to 2 microfarads, it will be unstable. And then bigger than 2 microfarads, it will be stable again. You see, that is actually quite limited. Our device, therefore, will be unstable if the capacitive, pure capacitive loading is anything between 10 nanofarads and 2 microfarads. Because we've got some resistances, it is not going to be as bad as this, but on the other hand, this plot, this line, actually is showing the line of zero phase margin. But we want at least 45 to 50 degrees of phase margin. So things get worse a little bit for us here because the curves show where the phase margin is zero. If we want 45 degrees of phase margin, actually the documents that are available recommend that allow a margin of 10. So if I multiply these ranges by 10, then I end up with an unstable region of anything between one nanofarad to two microfarad. So to me, that is quite limiting, especially because I don't know what is the exact value of my uh, capacitive loading. That's for uh, TL431. LMV431 is uh, very similar. Then there is another device with, with very similar characteristics, and that is TLV431. And that comes in two different flavors, type A and type B. Type B is much more stable than type A. This is the curve for type A, and this is the curve for type B. And you will see again, if you these, these are just available, these are simply available in your data sheet. You just have to look it up. You will see that the staple region for this one is actually much, much wider. So you are less likely to go unstable. But with this particular device, please be careful because uh, the breakdown voltage is only 7.5 volts. So if you have bigger than 7.5 volts between cathode and anode, you actually pop the device. So it's a little bit sensitive. Uh, the one that um, seems to have the best stability region and best robustness at the same time is LMV431, again available from TI. And uh, the stability boundary shown in the data sheet is like so. And you'll see that for this device, is actually stable from one picofarad to 
10 microfarad for the same condition as the previous slides that we talked about. At least according to the plot, if the current is uh, uh, below 3 milliamps, then it should be stable uh, all the time, provided that we don't go below the minimum bias current of the device, which is also specified. And I think for this device is only uh, 100 microamps, which is great. So, if possible, we would recommend using this one, mainly because it's going to give you a headache later. It might be a little bit more expensive than TLV431, uh, but, um, but trust me, it will, it, will save you <laughs> it will save you a lot of trouble. Uh, there is a device available from LT, LT1431. There's a pink compatible version with T. Uh, L431 and that has exactly the same as stability issues. So as far as I'm, I'm concerned, this is one of the best ones that I've seen, though there may be others. So now that we can differentiate between the stability issues, oh yeah, um, so if this goes unstable, the whole thing is going to go unstable. How do we differentiate between the TL431 going unstable or instability being caused as the result of wrong current gain, as a result of noisy uh, or poor layout, as a result of lots of other things. Instability is instability. The way to deal with it is to actually make a little test board and assess the stability of the compensator on its own before putting it into the power supply. Here is the circuit of the uh, a device, uh, of, the, of the test fixture. Uh, you can make this yourself if you wish. Uh, it's basically an op amp which is closing the loop across a type 2 or a type 3 compensator. All you are doing is you are setting a reference voltage here and then you are taking the feedback to the other pin of the op amp. Now because of the infinite gain approximation, the voltage at this point will have to be the same as the voltage at that point. The voltage here is VCE. There. The voltage here you set with a pot on board. So let's say on the operating condition of your power supply, this needs to be 4 volts. You turn this to be 4 volts. The op amp output will become anything that it has to become in order to make sure that VCE is also 4 volts. And then you've got an injection resistor and you measure the, uh, measure the overall uh, loop and that will give you uh, uh, the, whether or not the, the, the poles are where you think they are and also whether or not it's stable. So on the board you can set it, the, the pull up to whatever value because we are using a chip that is giving us 8 volts we set this to 8 volts so that that's identical conditions. WDS will give you all of the uh, uh, required values for the compensation and poles and zeros. Demand value is around 4 volts, so we set that using the pot on board. That is the actual value of VCE. This is a closed loop op amp with a large, very large capacitor and a polar origin to give you a very uh, slow but a stable response. You're not after fast transient. All you want to do is making sure that this uh, stays fixed at 4 volts. Finally, we can inject with the Bode and measure. So when I measured the loop, this is the result that I got from Bode 100 versus the simulation from WDS. So here, the uh, red trace is simulation from WDS of the compensator and here the blue trace and the thicker red trace here is the actual measurement and you see that I've got an excellent fit up to about 10 kilohertz after which the simulation phase fails because the bandwidth of the opto kicks in. That's the gain from Bode, that's the gain from WDS, that's phase from Bode, that's phase from WDS. You can actually import from Bode into WDS and you will see Again, this is what we have. The black trace is the measurement from Bode. The red trace is the isolated, uh, uh, compensated at WDS uh, design. So that's a simulation. And you can see that we've got an almost perfect match.